The movie begins in a strict Shaolin monastery. It consists of several young men competing to be the best kung fu master of all time. The most naive and untalented one of them all is a young man named Little Mute who doesn't speak for an unknown reason. He struggles to keep up with his fellow students, making him the laughingstock. One afternoon, the master orders all his pupils to do a special task that will help them learn the famous weightless technique. He asks them to fetch two whole buckets of water from a river while wearing heavy iron shoes that weigh more than five kilograms on each leg. Not just that, but after filling the buckets, they have to walk a mile uphill. Once they master this technique, they will be like birds, able to jump on roofs and perform aerial acrobatics. Little Mute's classmates see that he is excited about the task and allow him to go first. They are so confident in his incompetence that they know he will be the last one to complete the task. As they had predicted, he fills the bucket early but can barely walk with the shoes weighing him down. Everyone surpasses him, leaving him the last one climbing the hill. Eventually, he even drops the bucket and sits down hopelessly. He has been trying his very best to survive in the monastery, but a failure like this shakes his spirit. As he thinks about how he got to this point in life, we are taken to a flashback. A few years ago, Little Mute's father was killed by a masked robber for money. The killer was a kung fu master who beat them up badly before killing the man. Hence, the only reason Little Mute joined the monastery is to become skilled enough to kill the murderer one day. Lost in his thought, he only comes back to reality when a nun approaches him. On seeing that he has given up on the task, she encourages him with motivating words. The nun's name is Five Plums, and she is also a kung fu expert. After talking to her for a while, Little Mute completes the task with great effort. However, since he is the last one, the master calls him lazy. He even reveals that no student in several years has taken as long as him to complete the task. Little Mute is made to chop wood for the entire month as punishment. While he is doing so outside the monastery, he is approached by a drunk monk. Initially, the man blabbers something about perseverance in Kung Fu, which Little Mute has no interest in. But then, he reveals a secret about the monastery. The two end up in a hidden chamber behind the waterfall where only the high-level masters are allowed to come. There, an old man has been held prisoner with his hands and legs chained to the wall. To Little Mute, who doesn't know what the man's crime was, the punishment seems irrational and harsh. Two monks arrive in the cave and give the prisoner food and water. When they leave, Little Mute comes into view and helps the prisoner eat. The gesture wins the prisoner's trust, and he finds out Little Mute is not one of the monk's minions. He devours the food and asks the kid to bring him wine the next time. I've got 50 bucks that says that prisoner killed Little Mute's dad. In the following scene, the best student of the monastery gets ready for the final task that every student must complete before graduating from the Shaolin Monastery. The task's name is the Wooden Test, where a person must enter a narrow hallway containing 36 Shaolin wooden men. They are mechanical dummies that attack anyone who enters the hallway with great speed and strength. Each one of the mechanical dummies is 50 times faster and stronger than an average human, so the task is extremely difficult. The student enters with confidence but is beaten so badly that he has to be carried outside. The master reprimands him for being overconfident and lectures everyone else to take it as a lesson to never underestimate the final test. The following day during lunch, Little Mute saves a bun under his clothes for the prisoner. He also steals a little bit of wine from the drunken monk. Then, when no one is looking, he returns to the cave behind the waterfall and meets the prisoner again. The man happily drinks the wine and promises to reward him when he escapes the prison. The two chat for a long time about the wooden test. According to the prisoner, the test is a joke. He claims that he would have torn the wooden men apart in no time if it were him. Little Mute listens to him attentively, but doesn't necessarily believe him. The prisoner also reveals that the reason for his imprisonment was he was practicing a new kung fu technique called Lion's Roar. The monks didn't like that he was getting more powerful than their entire lot, so they apprehended him. The next day, Little Mute is assigned to kitchen duty and tries to steal wine for the second time. However, the monk catches him this time and teaches him a lesson. He is ordered to clean the kitchen every day until the end of the month as punishment. After sweeping the kitchen spotlessly clean for hours, he impresses the drunken monk and is let off the hook this time. Later, he again goes to the prisoner with food. 
Impressed by his kindness, the man decides to teach him kung fu techniques, even though he is chained. His techniques are primarily different from that of the monks, but Little Mute continues to learn them with diligence. There are some principles that the prisoner stands by, but Little Mute doesn't agree with, like ignoring the rule of Shaolin altogether and always ending the battle with a kill. Other than following such rules, Little Mute becomes the prisoner's best pupil and works hard for the next few months. One afternoon, he is practicing outside the cave when Five Plums sees him. She notices that the kung fu style he is practicing is not the usual one taught in the monastery. It is dangerous and mostly used by criminals who divert from the path of what actual kung fu teaches. She advises Little Mute that a man should never learn kung fu to spread violence and evil. It is a sacred art that one must use only to defend themselves and others. The kung fu he is learning defeats its purpose, hence he will have to unlearn the art. Five Plums then starts training him in the gliding snake style. The principle of this style of kung fu is the exact opposite of the style that the prisoner is teaching him. Little Mute continues learning from both masters and has the option to choose between their principles. As time passes, he masters both techniques and becomes a fighter like no other. One day, after training, the prisoner tells him that he has learned everything there is to the lion's roar style and is now ready to face the wooden men test. Knowing that this will be the last time they meet before Little Mute graduates, the prisoner gives him a tiny piece of paper that he wants to be taken to the cashier of the Evergreen Medicine Shop. Since it is the least Little Mute can do for his master, he agrees. Then comes the day when Little Mute is supposed to take the final test. Everyone thinks it is a joke until he goes into the wooden alley and actually fights well. Using the skills taught by both his teachers, he manages to defeat the wooden dummies in the end and graduates with flying colors. Before leaving the monastery, he goes to meet the head monk. For the past few years, not even a single person has passed the wooden test, which makes the monk believe that Little Mute is doing something different. Little Mute doesn't say anything, but the master eventually figures out that he met the prisoner. He prays to God for forgiveness on Little Mute's behalf and asks if the prisoner gave him anything. The man stays loyal to his master and doesn't reply. Before he leaves, he is handed a wooden scroll and is asked to meet the sublime master in the hills. In the following scene, we see Little Mute meeting the cashier of the medicine shop. Upon reading the message, he instantly recognizes who it is from. It is then revealed that the prisoner is none other than Kang, the leader of the bandits named the Green Dragon. He wasn't imprisoned because he was a threat to the monks, but because he used his skill to spread violence and kill innocent people. In the message, he has asked the people of his gang to await his return. Still unaware of this, Little Mute continues living life as usual. He ends up in a restaurant where the members of the same gang are misbehaving with the owner's daughter, Orchid. Little Mute saves her from the thugs and gains appreciation from her father. As a result, he is allowed to stay in their inn for as long as he wants. One night, the monks of the Shaolin Monastery hear a loud roar. When they rush to check the cave, they find it empty. Kang has mastered the lion's roar technique and escaped. The same night, the members of the Dragon Gang trouble Orchid again. They want to abduct her and present her to their master as his mistress when he arrives. She tries to fight them but is ultimately kidnapped. The following day, Little Mute and a waiter from Orchid's restaurant go out looking for her. On their way, they come across Kang fighting the monks from the monastery who are trying to stop him from running away. Unaware of Kang's true identity, Little Mute helps him escape by distracting the monks. The gang leader is thankful and agrees to help them find the missing girl in return. After that, the three go to a restaurant to eat since Kang hasn't had good food in a long time. Suddenly, Kang notices a bald man outside the house and kills him, assuming that he is a monk. When the shop owner retaliates, he refuses to accept his mistake and instead blames the dead man for being bald. <laughs> Goddamn baldies. He even kills the entire family of the restaurant owner in a fit of rage. Little Mute is shocked, as he never thought the person he respects so much would kill an entire innocent family. When he tries to reason with the man, he and the waiter are kicked out of the house. Surprisingly enough, when the two return to the inn later, Orchid also returns home unharmed. She says that the thugs let her go without saying why. The next day, Little Mute randomly remembers the scroll that he was supposed to give to the Sublime Master. 
Without wasting more time, he goes to the hill and meets the blind master. On feeling the scroll, he finds out that Little Mute is Kang's student. Initially, he berates Little Mute for choosing the wrong path, but promises to show him the right way. He then reveals that he was Kang's master in the monastery, and the one who taught the gangster everything about Kung Fu. However, Kang repaid his master with violence and began killing people, misusing his lessons. In the end, he was captured and imprisoned, but the sublime master blamed himself for Kang's deeds and blinded himself. That is some Dobby the House Elf shit. He now lives in the hills as a hermit, but is ready to help the monastery if his former pupil is threatening its safety. The current head monk is afraid that the monks have grown old. If Kang and his gang land an attack on the monastery, they won't be able to defend themselves. The only person who can help them is Little Mute. Hence, the Sublime Master hands him a book containing the ultimate Kung Fu style. It is the most dangerous and sacred technique of all, which only a few monks are able to master. Over the next few years, Kang and his people plan an attack while Little Mute trains in his third Kung Fu style. He is made to carry 300 kilograms of rocks on his shoulders for hours alongside other brutal exercises. Under the guidance of the head monk, he manages to master the style in a few years. Now, with three different kung fu techniques at his disposal, Little Mute is ready to fight any battle. Then, one day, Kang and his people finally attack the monastery. When Little Mute tries to stop them, Kang laughs, revealing that he was the one who killed his father long ago. <laughs> at least 300,000 of you owe me 50 bucks now. I'm rich. A shocked Little Mute speaks for the first time in years. He reveals that he had vowed to never let a word out of his mouth until he finds his father's killer. The revelation is followed by a final showdown between Kang and Little Mute. Kang uses Lion's Roar technique and defends against all of Little Mute's snake-style attacks. Initially, the clashing technique works in Kang's favor, but when he tries to attack, he faces the same problem. Finally, Little Mute uses the ultimate style and turns the fight around. Even after being beaten brutally and refusing to land any fatal attacks, he manages to win in the end. To everyone's surprise, Kang accepts defeat and is happy that his only student has mastered the teachings. However, it turns out to be a ruse to take Little Mute by surprise. Kang plans to use the deadly slicing throat move on him, but Little Mute moves just in time, and the attack lands on Kang himself. He dies because of the impact, and his gang runs away in fear. In the last scene, Little Mute returns to the monastery and turns into a monk. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.